you've just signed up with HoneyBook or you're thinking about getting started with HoneyBook, but you have no clue where to start. This video is going to be for you because I am going to share with you the five tasks that I think every new HoneyBook user should do before they get started with anything else. In case you're new here, hello, I'm Kaniqua J and I'm a Squarespace website designer and system strategist. And I help my clients level up their visibility online income and their life through website design, digital products, and streamlined workflows. So I have been using HoneyBook for years in my website design business, and I absolutely love them. I can do so many different things inside of HoneyBook from invoicing to contracts to managing my client workflows, automations, which is one of my favorite features of using HoneyBook, and so much more. And in, just in case you're not aware, HoneyBook is a CRM system which is a customer relationship manager. So let's go ahead and dive into HoneyBook. And I'm going to share with you again, those first five tasks that you want to go through and complete before you do anything else. And in case you haven't already signed up for HoneyBook, I do have a 50% off your first year HoneyBook with my link, which is in the description box below. The first thing I recommend that you do is go inside of your company settings and customize everything there. So you can access this from the top right of your screen, you'll be able to go through and just click on company settings. And this will bring you to the screen similar to what I have here. So this is where you can go through, fill out all of your company information. You can go through and add in your brand elements. So these are things like your logos, any type of pictures, you can customize your button colors, you can add images and text and all of that goodness right inside of these few sections here. I absolutely love this. This allows for me to be able Able to go through and have an on-brand customization as I'm sending out files out to my customers and my clients. You can also go through and set your preferences. So this is where you could customize like your lead sources, like where your leads are coming from, your project details, project types, all of that can be customized there in your company notifications. How do you want to be notified? How do your customers want to be notified? Currently right now, I have everything turned on as far as like the customer notification. So I want to be notified of pretty much everything that is going out from my account. But then you also have other things like actions. So for my website design business, I don't necessarily need an action. All of these action items that are listed here. Like, so for example, send a questionnaire to my clients three weeks before the project date. I don't necessarily need to have that turned on. So I have it turned off. However, I do like things set for like, send a reminder to my client if they haven't viewed a smart file within two days, I do have that selected. And you can easily customize these selections by clicking on this little icon here. And you can choose like the duration of when you wanna be notified and what email that you want to actually go out, which we'll talk about that here in a second. You can also do payment reminders and some default formats. And then there's smart file default settings here. So definitely go through these preferences and select and deselect the things that you don't want. This is where you can go through your domain and client portal. This is where your clients can access their client portal. So you can customize this. You can create your own unique link. Anything that's before this uh, hbportal.co, you can customize this. And you can also create a custom screen here to a certain degree. You can change the background colors and your logos. You integrate with a lot of different things. So like your Gmail, if you have Google, Outlook, I would recommend going through and connecting those particular things. You can go through and connect to Zoom, Calendly, uh, Zapier. So they have a lot of good Zapier plugins that we also use as well. Slack. There's so many different things that you go can go through and connect from here. So definitely go through and connect to the software that you're already using. Um, you have your team folder. So this is if you have a team, you can add your team member on here. Your membership, of course, is your plan, bank details, and all of that. So just be sure that you complete everything inside of your settings section. The next thing you want to do is you want to go through and save yourself some time by creating some templates and templates could be for various different things. So there's like brochures, there's emails, there's smart files, there's so many different templates that you can go through and create your contract templates. All of that are things that you want to go through and create beforehand if possible. Now you're not going to have everything done at once, but the more you can, the better and more streamlined your processes will be. We do have a 
couple of templates inside of ours. We're currently rebranding our company and adding in additional services. So we're going to be creating new smart files for those services and rebranding and changing a couple of things. But in this section here, you can go through and even customize your emails or create email templates. So we have several different email templates. This allows for us to be able to go through and send out emails to our clients quickly the things that we're going through and sending out repetitively. So that way we're saving time and not having to mainly go through and type every email from scratch. We can simply just go through and with a click of a button, we can send out a email notification to that particular client, as well as some of these emails are actually attached on to automation. So this allows for us to be able to set up our automation and a particular email go out to the client without us even having to worry about it. So definitely go through, go ahead and add your emails inside of here. If you already have them, you can simply just go through create email, label your email and go ahead and put your message and make sure that you do add in the subject line as well. Now, HoneyBook does have some default emails that are in this particular section as well too that cannot be deleted. So you will see some of these that do say default. However, you can click on them and you can customize them to say exactly what it is that you wanted to say, whatever fits your business. Okay, so number three is going through and completing or creating a custom form. This is how, if you go here to the top at your tools and you can go to contact form, this is how your clients and your customers can actually get into your HoneyBook account. So you can go through, this is one of the forms that we do have on our current website. We're going to be changing our form to a different form for our new website that we are launching, but you can go through and you can create a form similar to like a basically inquiry form where you can go through and add in questions and then you can go through and take this form and embed it into your website. That way when your client, your customer does go to your website, they will enter the information and the information will automatically be filtered into your HoneyBook system. And then you can take them through whatever automation that you have. You can send them out emails, questionnaires, everything that you need to do for your particular business. So customizing the form is very, very simple. Um, you're able to go through and change over designs. You can change the colors of the forms that you do have. You can also change over the fonts as well as to, you do have different settings. So for example, on this particular one, we have, of course, my name, but you can also invite your different team members. If you have different team members, they do have default thank you messages that just takes you to a, just a regular HoneyBook page that says thank you, or you can actually add in your own custom URL if you would like as well. Well, on one of our other accounts, we do have a custom URL, which it routes them to a, a page that's actually on our website. You can also go through and you can automate your contact form by assigning it to a different project. So that is where this project type here, this is where this pulls from your company settings. So in our company settings, these are the project types that we have listed, like Squarespace website design, business consultations, courses, HoneyBook CRM. Those are the project types that we have. So we have them on the form as well. But right now we have just that one general form, but we will be creating different forms for different services as well too. So just make sure that with your forms, again, that you go through, you, once you go through and hit publish, on that form. So anytime you make any changes, it's going to ask you, do you want to publish or change it? So if I hit publish here, but if you go through, you hit publish, this allows for you to be able to go through and copy the code and embed it into your website. For any reason, if you're unable to do that, or you just want to link a form down here at the bottom left, you're able to go through and copy the link and you can link it and maybe just put a button on your website if you don't want to embed the form itself. The next thing I recommend is going through and customizing your project workflow. So when you actually get someone to come inside of your HoneyBook account, they are going to basically go through HoneyBook and their uh, their workflows here. So inside of here, as you can see, this is like a custom workflow that we do have. You can go through and customize this workflow by clicking on that customize button. And there you're able to go through and set up a flow that actually matches your company. So like, for example, with us, like we have the 
inquiry and follow up. If you notice, there are certain ones that do have locked buttons. These are ones that you're not able to go through and change through HoneyBook defaults. But then we have like a meeting, proposal sent, contract sent, retainer paid, project kicked off to go through and customize this workflow because this is the flow that your clients or your customers are going through. You can customize this pipeline. And if you need to add an additional stage, all you would need to do is simply just hit add stage. And then you would just type in whatever that stage is. And then you can drag it to wherever you want it to go. And you just simply just hit save. Okay, so the last thing I recommend is making sure that you go through and set up your scheduler. So if you are a coach or maybe you're a consultant and you're having people go through and book discovery calls, go ahead and set up your scheduler. This is a, an awesome scheduler. I was using Acuity for years. And when I started using HoneyBook, I was able to go through and cancel Acuity. So I have a lot of different appointment types inside of here. There are numerous ones that you can have. If you have team members, your team members can also have their own schedules inside side of there as well. And you can activate some and deactivate them when needed. So as you can see, some of mine are deactivated. I can see here the full view of the availability. And if you wanted to go through and just create a schedule, all you have to do is just go to new session and you're able to go through and put in the session type. So for us, we put video, you put in the title, and then you put in the, the actual video type. So we have Zoom, which is actually the integration that we had in that setting section. We have the integrations. I'm just going to put test here. And then you put in your time zone, duration, and just put in all the information about that particular meeting, how you want to go through and send out reminders. You will then go through and put in your availability for this particular type of session. So I like that different sessions can have different availability. So I may have more availability for reviewing website projects, which is what I do. So being that we do websites, my availability for meetings typically is on Tuesdays and Thursdays. But for my website clients, I may have Tuesday, Thursday, and Fridays to review it to be able to give my clients more range of what they can go through and they can book. So you can do that. You can add in team members onto these meetings as well as confirmations and send out automatically confirmation emails. So definitely go through and use the scheduler if that's something that you need in your particular business. And then I recommend going through and syncing your calendar. So if you go to calendar, you're able to go through and view, I can view my calendar with my calendar, my Google calendar. So just be sure that you have synced your calendar in those integration fields. That way, the meetings that you have, that especially if you are a user of using Google calendar or another calendar that you can go through and you can sync them together. If you want to learn more about streamlining your business using HoneyBook, then you want to continue watching this five-part series. Video number three is going to release next Thursday, and we're going to dive deeper into the features that I showed you today, as well as you know we have to talk about automation because that is my favorite part about streamlining your business. So be sure that you like this video and that you subscribe and you continue to tune into this series. And if you want to give HoneyBook a try, my link is in the description box below where you can grab 50% off your first year of HoneyBook. And in case you've missed it, watch this video on three simple steps to streamline your client workflow.